It's Paul Marsh, and I am delighted to say that I've been joined by singer-songwriter Ben Brown. Ben, how are you? I'm great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Of course, of course. Well, um, where do we start? Where do we start? You've got you've got the single coming out called Let Go. You're about to go on tour, and you are coming through Portsmouth as well. Um, but should we kind of negate all of that for the moment and kind of go back to the start a little bit and 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 talk about how you ended up where you did now because you didn't start out as a as a solo artist did you you started out in a couple of bands yeah um when i was in my teenage years uh or my, my late teenage years i found a group of friends uh at college and we created a band called dingus khan which then uh went on throughout my most of my adulthood really uh and we kind of toured around playing festivals and released an album and that kind of stuff and then I started a band called Superglue uh, with my partner at the time, my brother, uh, who's now an insurance broker, and my friend Ben, who um, does something else in the music industry now. And we toured around and went to America and stuff like that. So all, all kind of upbeat, um, fairly rowdy, uh, at times experimental indie rock. And now I'm doing something that feels quite different to that. Like very upset. Very upset. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, first of all, I love the names, two names, Dingus Khan and, and Superglue, brilliant, brilliant names. What <laughs> was it that made you sort of want to branch off onto your own? Well, to be, to be completely honest, it was during the, um, in the pandemic, um, it was we, obviously no one was allowed to play, perform any shows really. And it got towards the end of the pandemic. And unlike everyone else who seemed to have created new hobbies or become an expert at making some sort of bread or, uh, I'd done nothing apart from get <laughs> fatter, I'd got much, much fatter and more unhealthier, and kind of uh, that's what I'd redone. So I picked up my guitar and thought, well, I'll start trying to relearn the songs because I'll soon I'll be out gigging again with the, with the band. And I guess because it, it was a, a time of quietness, I suppose, and uh, introspection, and in, in in some ways, I just kind of started playing the guitar a bit um, quieter. Um, it was in my living room rather than a rehearsal studio, and then that for bore out or bought that that um led to these songs really these kind of slightly more quieter songs and then i couldn't really bring them well i may have brought them to the band but that it would have been quite it would have been a bit over very different yeah. yeah yeah and then so at what point in this did you meet frank turner which kind of led you further on down that path again well i was that was a uh, i was playing at a barbecue in on mersey island and he'd moved there during the pandemic and I was invited to play at someone's barbecue um, type thing. He's, he he remembers it as a house party, but I think he was a bit drunk, maybe. I, I, remember, it as a, I remember it as a bit more of a barbecue. <laughs> um, and he turned up and he'd been working in his studio, which was in his house in Mersey, and heard me, caught the end of my set and said, oh, I'd love to record your music. And we exchanged numbers um, and I kind of thought, oh, well, I'm sure he's very busy. But then a few a few weeks later, he texted me and said, oh, come come on let's get let's get into it so i went around to his and started tracking these songs and if it wasn't for him really and his kind of um pushing me to do it i probably would have just kind of sat on them or it's sometimes you need a bit of pressure really i find yeah to kind, of, kind of get on to kind of get on with that thing or to put that shelf up or whatever yeah <laughs> so, i know i know exactly what you mean yeah so sometimes you just need the little kick to to take it to that next level um i've interviewed frank a couple of times not only is he an amazingly talented musician he's also a really really nice guy yeah he's nice he cooked he cooked me um pasta and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I can't really, can't really felt him there. <laughs> <laughs> and how much, um, how much sort of influence did he have with your, with the process? Did he guide you in any way, or did he just kind of help you along the way? Yeah, um, I think part of being a good producer is being able to. One thing is being a, a, a an expert at um, using all the tools and stuff like that. But more so, it's it's about communication and creating. A feeling of mm. uh, i suppose i suppose safety and um a, play, a safe place for you can, to express and you can encourage and criticize um in this kind of place where you both feel comfortable that's the main challenge and i think because he's had years of um being in the studio he no he knows that it's quite a lot in the head as well as, yep. well as being proficient um and i think he would probably say himself he probably he is not the he he's been learning to produce it's kind of like in downtime from um doing all of his stuff so he's he was learning 
obviously he's really good at producing as well but it was kind of like learning more and more as as we were doing it but yeah mostly his input was instantly creating this kind of safe space of encouragement and um oh i think you can you can do that better or or not not necessarily settling and aiming aiming high which is what um which is what i i really like to do as well i like to, I, I like to work with people who, who really push and strive and say oh no not in a horrible way but oh that's not quite good enough or, yeah like, well, no like, exactly exactly i don't think there's anything wrong with encouraging people to to try try something again well, well why don't you do it this way why don't you do it that way i'm i'm you know i'm sure you can hit that note a little bit better I'm, there's all yeah. of that and it's not it's not you know discouraging somebody it's in fact it's the opposite it's encouraging somebody to just try it a new way and see if it'll be better yeah yeah so that that, that was that that was a really enjoyable um that was a very enjoyable process and um yeah working one-on-one -on -one like that rather than being in a big band where you've got people sitting around on their phones or whatever and, or yeah or not, not, not that i've done not that I've been in that situation loads, but or you've got some people who have done their bit and they're kind of waiting for it to to go home in a way. Yeah, or yeah. Trying to keep, but when it's just one on one, you're you're both you both present the whole time. Yeah, very much so. Um, and then what know. what was it like actually going out on tour with him? Was it was it any different? Was it exactly the same? It was different. Um, it they were bigger audiences for a start. <laughs> it was kind of I said at one of the gigs. The amount of people I'd normally play to would, would be the amount that maybe you might see in the queue for the toilet. Not yeah. That, not, that I, not that I'm kind of like un, unpopular, but like I might go around, if I was to go to that place on my own, I might play to a handful of people. Yeah. In say, um, I don't know where we, wherever we're going, Southampton or something like that, or near Portsmouth. Or if I was yeah. going yeah. to turn up to Portsmouth next, this weekend, maybe a handful of people turn up. But there was hundreds verging on like, yeah, like a thousand people or whatever. So it made it feel quite different. There was a there was a moment where it, because the crowd was so big, I'm used to kind. Of, I really like to have that kind of human connection while yeah. I'm playing. And because it was so big, it almost felt like there was, um, uh, on the early gigs, that there was no one there. Yeah, that makes sense. Because no, I know, a, I know exactly what you mean. I've I've done various hosting bits and pieces, and it's easier to host to thousands of people because you don't see any faces. Whereas yeah. when you're hosting to 30 or 40 people, you see everybody's faces. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had to kind of work. I had to, um, it was a learning curve, like saying, do you know what? Can I have all the lights turned on? There was all these new kind of um, things, which I kind of never thought about before. Like, can you turn the lights on? Because I, I need to see the people out there. So it was kind of building this, um, trying to create a way to get that intimacy back, mm. um, which was my, which was, which was different. And I, I've managed to work that into the, my performance now it's part of the set where i have all the lights on and yeah so there was there was some unexpected things which um but I, overall it, it was absolutely fantastic and felt like a real leveling up and um i gained lots of new fans and just the whole way that the operation is run was quite inspiring really and then of and course really... you um you were just about to head out on tour again you're going to go out on the tour with skinny lister supporting them which of course you are coming to the portsmouth wedgwood rooms on the 12th of december you must be looking forward to that one i'm very looking forward to that one i've um i've been to the wedgwood rooms a few times actually with fingers khan and super glue oh wow um, we played uh, south sea festival do you remember that Oh, no, I don't. I'm sure it's probably turned into something else by now, but no, I don't remember yeah, that. One. That was that was quite a few years ago, and uh, we were invited to perform at Pie and Vinyl. Yes, um, yeah. Before Beforehand, and we uh, um, ate a pie. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> I seem to remember that we, we went out to a club afterwards, and we didn't have any accommodation, so all of us slept in a car. <laughs> <laughs> sitting upright <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully hopefully a bit, bit, bit more uh, I think I've got a travel lodge book this time but yeah I'm very very much <laughs> looking forward to it yeah, but sleeping in, a, sleeping in a car is horrendous because obviously you, you're obviously a bit drunk and then you wake up and you're soaking wet because yes. no one's opened the window yeah you know, like the condensation, the, condensation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the things so, yeah. you do when you're younger eh yeah. <laughs> So obviously you're going out on tour and the, one of the things you're going to be doing is playing and talking about your new single, Let Go, um, and, and all, obviously all of your previous singles as well. What's the reaction been like to them? Um, fantastic. Um, everyone, yeah, the reaction, everyone's into them, so that's good. <laughs> no one said, I hate this music. That's, that's always nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is which is yeah which is nice so yeah uh and i'm being invited out on to do these events and tours and stuff like that off the back of it so 
Um, yeah, so I can only assume the reaction's good. I'll find out. If it, if the people of Portsmouth start throwing uh, tomatoes at me, then, then I'll know. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, Ben. I think you're probably going to be okay. Um, <laughs> so what can we expect from you next? Like you say, we, we, you've got the single out now called Let Go, which is absolutely brilliant. We're going to play that very shortly. What's next? Next is going to be, um, I'm going to be, so I've got the Skinny Listed Tour, and then I've got an, I'm going out on tour with Pet Needs, who are another extra mile band. Uh, in January, and I'm going to kind of push the, the the song "Dancing with Your Eyes Closed," which is kind of like the fourth song off the EP. And then I will be doing a, a a brief solo tour, I think, in May, and that will have a new single for that. And then in towards the end of 2025, I'll have a new record out and uh, playing everywhere. I think like the, my booking agent said, we'll play everywhere. So he's already started sending me. Places of uh, like villages and stuff like that. And I thought, where's that? Which I love. I love playing it in a uh, in all sorts of places. So you, you're so, going to go out on tour for like six months then? Yeah, he wants it to be like a month straight or something. Which, <laughs> which, which, which a month doesn't feel like that long. But if it, if it really is a month straight, that will be a lot. Uh, well, look, Ben, thank you so much for talking to me. I really do appreciate it. Like I say, you are going to be in town in Portsmouth uh, on the 12th of December supporting Skinny Lister at the Wedgwood Rooms. 